Okay, well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Discrete Math uh, for Spring 2021. This is the first lecture. My name is Scott Grizzard from the University of South Florida. Um, I do have a green screen behind me and I apologize for the lighting um, variables in the green screen. Um, there is, uh, there's the uh, new stuff and also the, this thing makes me sound like a robot apparently. Um, so new stuff is on order for new tech for the new semester. Um, but, uh, it's not here yet. Um, that green screen is really getting bad now, isn't it? Let's see if I put this up a little bit. Maybe if I turn off the light. Nope, that made it worse. Okay, well, today we're going to have lousy green screen. I promise new lights are in order, so we'll have better green screen next time. Okay, so... Um, there are two options for chat. There is class chat on Twitch itself. Um, so you can talk and stream chat, but remember that that chat is public. Um, if you want to chat for private and if you want to respond to polls, uh, please do on, so on Discord. So you need to log on to Discord if you have not yet. Um, and you can do that um, The if you go to the uh, website if you go to our Canvas, you will find a link. Is there a way for me to do this where it won't show the link on Twitch? Yes. So if you, um, let's see, if you go to, horrible green screen, there's my cat. Um, here, say hi, Gracie. She didn't want to say hi. She wants to leave. She wants me to feed her. Here's Gracie. I just fed you. Nice. Now, if you go to the click Discord right here, uh, you will be able to join the server. Make sure that when you do so, that you go to the select my class, choose my class, and choose discrete math so that you have access to everything. All right, you have to go. Out, 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 out. Okay. And that was the cat. Uh, this 5 p.m. class is at the time when Gracie wants attention. We'll see what goes on there. We're fixing that. Okay. So um, first, uh, I'm going to give you a poll. One to five. How did we feel about... Did we make... Uh, let's see. Camera only again. Um, one to five. How did we feel about getting the... Um, getting the... Um, the There's the new command. Um, it's not working. Uh, okay, we have a problem with the polls. Um, okay, well, there are technical issues on the first class. Apparently, the poll is not polling. Um, uh, we have two polls here. Let's try the five poll. Uh, Proctorio. Nope, five polls not working either. Okay, well, we have poll breaking. Um, so normally when I ask one to five, I want uh, you to tell me, um, you know, with the emote thing, um, uh, uh, um, to the emote thing, um, I want you to do one, or five, one to five. Uh, for some reason, the poll thing, however, is not working today. Um, well, it's the first day of class. What do you want? This tech stuff that worked just fine last semester is not working now. Uh, this is um, strange. It was actually working last night. Why is it not working now? All right. Uh, by the way, uh, Laura is my T is one of my TAs for this class. Um, she is there, and she's going to um, hopefully try to figure out how to make the polls come back. Anyway. Um, so getting Proctorio to work, um, we are, um, ah, okay. So Dino is offline and five pole is apparently not working. Um, so, okay. That explains that. All right. So, um, we had another poll system. We'll have to come up with a backup, backup, backup poll system. Um, anyway, um, so, uh, basically an overview of the class, um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about math, um, from a IT and security, um, point of view. 
So we have a textbook, and I'm, let me mention something about the textbook. This is an excellent textbook for people that are studying discrete mathematics for computer science. This is an awesome textbook that doesn't actually do what we want it to do. It's not perfect because we are trying to do something that's a little different. We are studying IT, we are studying mathematics from a more IT and cybersecurity perspective. Therefore, we're going to be jumping around of this book. Um, and um, so if you have any questions about the textbook um, and why we're not following the textbook perfectly, that's why. It's, it's a good math book for what it's for, but it's not for this class. As It's not a good book for this class because it's, it's, it's a little bit, and but it's the best book out there for what we've got. Um, okay, so that's about the book. Um, okay, so, and then if you have Twitch issues, refresh, of course you can't see, so, um, that's not going to help. Anyway, so, yes, so, should you read any chapters for the book? There's also two other books for this class. So there's the book that I made you buy. Oops. And then there's the books that I put links to the ebooks on. Yay, we got five polls. I think. Okay. Um, there's two uh, books here from the library that are also being used in this class because there's not a good one um for this class um we're kind of going to pick these but these are free from the library all you do is you click on the link and you get them now today what we're going to talk about um is we're going to talk about sets counting in the natural numbers i'm going to go over the quiz first but give me just a moment on the quiz um and as you can see here i've got these on the side here i'm telling you where the books where to go in the book and um uh the kind of the where the exercises are and all of those things um i also mentioned this other textbook which i also linked on the the main page okay um so there you can see the exercises and stuff in the book so that's kind of the connection to the book i'll have like where it is now there's going to be material in the book that you're that um is valid for tests and quizzes that i'm not going to cover in class um and also the but not much so there's going to be a very little that from the book that i don't cover in class but there's also good background material um in the book that i'm not going to cover in class um now the note submission i'll talk about in just a moment but um, i'll talk about it now the note submission you can scan written notes you can take one notes in one note you can take notes on a tablet you can take notes on your ipad what you can't do is take my notes and turn them in as yours. Um, so when I post the notes from the class, um, which I'll do, and which you'll be able to find in the file section of Blackboard, um, not Blackboard, of Canvas, um, that's how long I've been at USF, okay? I remember when we used Blackboard. Not Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, Blackboard. Um, if you go to the course, you'll be able to find here, of course, there are no notes yet, but if you go to the course files, you see where it says class notes from last semester. There'll be, you know, later on today, there'll be another folder that says class notes where we're going to, where I'm going to upload the notes that I do during class. Okay. All right. So that's how the notes work. Um, so the typical class um, starts on um, um, online on here on, on Twitch with chat and discord. This seems to work best for everybody. Um, it seems to be the easiest way because, you know, you don't have to have an account on Twitch to watch it. And it, it just, you know, and, and the Discord seems to have all the features um, that we want. And, and, and it seems to be, it seems to handle bad connections much better than Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and Teams does. So that's why I decided on Twitch and Discord if you're, if you're, um, if you are um, wondering. So one to five, how do we feel about the setup here? One being, and five being, yeah! Um, and the polls are, uh, there we go. Um, I don't know why it's doing one, 
that's doing fives, multiples. We don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's the setup. Okay, so let's talk about the quiz for today. Okay, what is your name? What is your quest? To catch the Roadrunner, I'm messing in my metaphors. Right? What is your favorite color? Uh, and what was the last math class you took? Well, I took Acme Instant Calculus and Rocket Piloting course last year. Where did I take it? Uh, remote. One to five. How do we feel about question one and question two? One to five. Give me a five, Paul. This is question one and question two. How do we feel about those? There we go. All right. Let's simplify without a calculator. One over one third. This is just review stuff. Um, if you are having trouble with it, uh, please feel free to talk to me during office hours about it. I will be happy to talk. Um, math is hard. Um, don't feel like you don't, if you don't understand something, don't feel stupid for asking a stupid question. The smartest people ask the stupidest questions. And we've got to write that down later. So one over one third is the same as one divided by one third, which is the exact same thing as one times three over one, which equals three. Two to the fifth equals two times two times two times two times two, which equals four times four times two, which equals 16 times two, which equals 32. Three factorial equals three times two times one, which equals six. How do we feel there? One to five about A, B, and C. The makeup, by the way, is not posted yet. Um, so, yes. So, I have a two weeks Zen policy. Um, now let me talk about that. I'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. One plus X cubed. I need to multiply this out. So, what I wind up with is I wind up with, I'm going to have an X cubed plus three x squared plus 3x plus uh, 1. Okay, how do we feel about that one, 1 to 5? Remember, you need to multiply it out or use that little old theorem from pre-calc. It's not taught in pre-calc anymore. It's taught in, like, yes, you could use the train method, Pascal's triangle, all of that stuff. Okay, there's a quick question. Are these things going to be posted on YouTube? In theory, yes, they'll be posted on YouTube. In reality, I'm slow on getting things up to YouTube. Okay, so just so you know. All right. If 64 equals 2 to the x, what is x? Well, I already know that 2 to the 5th equals 32. So 2 times 2 to the 5th equals 64. So this right here, 2 times 2 to the 5th equals 2 to the 6th. So x equals 6. Okay. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? Okay, so that's the first quiz. Just kind of get your um, get your head in it. My last initial is C. My name is Wild E Coyote. I can't spell Coyote. Okay, all right. Are there any questions about this quiz? All right, now let me tell you about how retakes work. We haven't, we don't have the machinery yet for retakes, but let me just give this out to you. There is two weeks of Zen Dudism. Okay? So for the first two weeks, every quiz... 
may be retaken for full credit. Okay. All right, what else is true? Uh, flexible on due dates. Flexible on Proctorio. Understanding. of tech issues okay one to five how do we feel about this zen dudism policy for the first um for the first week for the first two weeks zen dudism for the first two weeks okay after two weeks i don't become an asshole but i'm going to start tightening things up So after two weeks, uh, uh, retakes will be for half the points you missed. Um, and uh, we don't have a machinery yet um, set up for doing the retakes, but we will have one by this weekend. Okay, are there any questions so far? Questions, all right. So let's jump on into this class. Um, there's a question about the notes assignment. The notes assignments deal with this stuff right here. So class 1A sets counting in the natural numbers. So this is the stuff you have to take notes on and turn in your notes for. Now, on the notes assignment, If you go to the assignments, uh, where are the assignments? Ah, there they are. They're hidden from me. Okay, so if you go to the assignment itself, you will see where it says class notes from lecture 1A. You will see a rubric down here with 25 points on it. You can get at most five points on the assignment. So the assignment is capped at five, but you can do anything you want to that adds to five points. Does that make sense? So if you turn in, you have more than one pages of notes with illustrated drawings and three plus questions answered. You would have six, seven, eight points, but you would only get five. So this is full credit here. If you only did this, you would get five points. If you did this and this and this, you get all five points, okay? Okay, now, um, what do you do if you get the, um, so you need to accumulate five points. I don't care how you do it, just get five points. You do more than five points, awesome, but you're not getting more than five points. Five points. Okay, that's how notes work. All right. Um, so you can turn in notes. Um, I'm, I'm asking you mostly to try to use PDFs. So to do PDFs on your phone, you can go to your phone. If you go to your phone and you get an app called, there's a, there's a bunch of good ones out there like Cam Scanner. The one I've been using lately, oops, um, is the Adobe Scan app. That works great. Also, um, uh, yes, so you can use Adobe Scan, you can use whatever, Cam Scanner's good. Uh, Dropbox has an inbuilt one apparently, blah, blah, blah. Yes, the broadcasts are saved on Twitch. Okay, are there any other questions about that? Okay, let's dig in then. 
Hmm. So as I said, the book problems are there, where the material is in the book, and where the material is on the other thing, the suggested problems. These are the problems that are referred to here. So where it says notes, questions answered, or problems and stuff like that, those are things like if you answer the questions, you get points for that in your notes assignments. Again, you don't have to. You can go get points everywhere else. I do encourage you to look at those problems, but I'm not collecting them beyond just seeing if you did some of them. Um, so again, I'm not collecting those problems if, uh, if you don't want to do them, you know, they could wind up on tests, but you know, they don't, it's, it's, I'm not going to sit here and collect problems and grade them because I don't have the staff and, um, you know, that'd be nice, but I don't have the staff. Um, all right. Any questions about that? Yes. One notes can be exported to PDFs and stuff like that. Okay. So let's, uh, we spent a good 20 minutes talking about the course. Let's go ahead and um, get started. So, let's see, if I turn this on, will it help? Ooh, that helped. Moving like out of that, excuse my reach. Okay, that seemed to help a little bit. Okay. Questions about calculators are answered in the syllabus. Um, I'm not going to answer them here. If I move a little bit, will it help? Well, now the artifact is back. All right, well, that'll be fixed when new stuff comes. Okay, so the questions we want to answer here is we want to kind of talk about sets and counting. This is kind of the basics of what we're doing. And we want to talk about how many messages can be in, encoded in n bits and we want to talk about how we count them. So, Paul Revere is standing at the old lighthouse, and he does one if by land, two if by sea. Okay? So he's trying to encode a message, right? He's got someone standing up in the old lighthouse for Paul Revere, and the British are coming or not coming, right? No lanterns. So let's see what he's got here. No lanterns. Okay. Means the British are not coming. Okay. One lantern. British are coming by land. Two lanterns by sea. Okay. Well, if I've got two lanterns, can I have another message? So I've got a red lantern and an orange lantern. Let's say instead I say this. Orange lantern. British are coming by land. Orange and red, red it by C. Is there another message that I could that Paul Revere could encode? What if I just had the red lantern?
right? Just red. So with two lanterns, I can encode four messages. None, orange, orange and red, red. How do we feel about that one to five? Okay. Well, let's suppose I had three lanterns. Let's say I also had a yellow lantern. Mm, yellow's not going to show up here. Let's make it a uh, totally unrealistic pink lantern. All right, so how many messages can I encode? Uh, yes, Twitch will save the videos. Sorry about that. So people are talking right now about the videos. Yes, the videos will be there. How many messages can I encode with three lanterns? Right? So I've got none, British are not coming. Orange, British are coming by land. Orange and red by sea. Red, just bring more coffee. All right, well, I could have pink alone. Right? I could have pink and red. We'll call this pink. I could have pink and red. Um... Right? I could have pink and orange. Uh, somebody give me a message. And then I could have pink, red, and orange. I want to go home. What is so bad about being British anyway? Um, okay. So I can encode eight different messages. One to five, how do we feel about that? Okay. Now, If I had four lanterns, I double the number to 16. With four lanterns, I could send 16 different messages. 
and so on and so on and so forth. Every time I add a lantern, every time I add a lantern, I double the number of messages. That can be sent. So, with N lanterns, there's a U there, I can send two to the N messages. Okay. How do we feel about this idea of one to five? Every time I add a lantern, I double the number of messages I send. So I can now send two to the end messages. Okay. I started with two lanterns for four messages. So if I had no lanterns, I could send one message, right? I don't have a lantern. It's the only thing I can say. With two lantern, with one lantern, I could send two messages. The British are coming and the British are not coming. With three, I could send four different messages. With four, I could send eight different, I'm sorry, with three, I could send eight different messages. With four, I can send 16 messages with five, I could send 32 messages, and with six, I could send 64 messages, and so on, and so on, and so forth. So two to the four equals 16, yes. Okay. Well, someone's already said that. Bits, right? Computers work with on and off switches. Right? Okay? Each on and off switch is a bit. Right? Famous quote from Tron, positive, negative, you're a bit. Right? Each on off switch is a bit. Okay. Now, what does this mean for us? Well, let's pull up the old ASCII table. Uh, that one has ads. D, 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 D. Do you think the one on Wikipedia does ads? Nope. Okay. So let's pull up an old ASCII table. Um, and we have here, you can see the binary for the individual encoding, correct? So I've been coding, so how many things, if I've got seven bits, how many different characters can I encode? And the answer is two to the seventh. All right, so I come down here and I notice that there are, let's see, one of these should be decimal. Yes. I can encode that many messages in the set. How do we feel about that one to five? I can put 128 different characters in the set. ASCII uses seven bits.
right? Which means it can contain two to the seventh, which equals 128 different messages. Okay? Um, it's freezing. Some people are saying that the Twitch stream is freezing. It's freezing on your end, not on my end. Um, okay. All right. Now, if we look at the ASCII table, we notice that there's an entry for 126. There's no entry for number 127 because that's a control character to say this is, you know, I'm done with ASCII. And there's not one for, and there's one up here for zero, so that's the other one, and that's the null character. Okay, so the idea here is I can control, is that with the seven bits, I could have 128 different messages. Now, it's not base seven, it's base two. Okay, so one to five, how do we feel about that? Someone's asking about, wait, aren't the first three characters, aren't the first three to say what follows is an English, uh, is that the next four represents an English character? No, you're thinking of a different encoding system, not ASCII. ASCII works by, um, by, um, uh, uh, blah, 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 by having all the, by having seven bit character strings. And then there are eight bit character strings that are different encoding formats. But this is a, the initial ASCII, straight ASCII. Okay. All right. So, that's kind of fun. Oops, I paused. Chat scroll. There it is. It. Okay. Well, what does this have to do with sets? Let's talk about sets, baby. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. For our purposes, okay, a set, oops, the mic is in the wrong position. There we go. For our purposes, a set is a collection of objects. Okay, there are a couple things that a set has. One, the elements in it are distinguishable. Okay, so what does that mean? I have here a deck of cards. Okay, in this deck, what is this? All right. The jokers are distinguishable in this deck. That's a weird deck of cards. Let's get a different deck of cards. I have here a deck of cards. Now, these are more, you know, Margaritaville deck of cards. Now, the cards in this deck are distinguishable from each other. So my deck of cards is a set, right? There are 52 cards in this deck. Now, I can't distinguish them by looking at this side, but if I flip it over, the king of clubs 
is different than the ace of diamonds. I can distinguish one from the other. Okay? Any questions about that? Yes, the king of parrots. There you go. And then the order... Uh, doesn't matter. Okay? So, the King of Clubs and the Ace of Diamonds, the set containing the King of Clubs and the Ace of Diamonds is the exact same as the set containing the Ace of Diamonds and the King of Clubs. They have to be distinguishable and they have to be... Uh, and the order that's in them doesn't matter. Okay, so, examples. Let's let the set A equal uh, 5, 7. The set containing 5 and 7. 5 is different to 7, and that the order doesn't matter. So this is the same as 7, 5. Everything's distinguishable, and the order doesn't matter. One to five, how do we feel about that? Okay. There's one other thing in here. In this class... Our sets will be either finite or constructible. Okay. So I've either got finite sets, like this deck of cards is a finite set. It has 52 elements in it. All distinguishable with order doesn't matter. Okay? All right, and it's finite. Now, we're going to have sets that are constructible, and we're going to construct our first one today that's infinite. But there's going to be, there's going to be an algorithm for creating them. Okay? Now, subsets. Somebody's already jumping the gun on me, which is awesome. Subsets. Okay. Let A and B be sets. A is a subset of B right. and I'm going to write that as A subset B if every element of A is also in B. Uh, do we have a computer freeze? Okay. No, we didn't. Example. Let A equal 6, 7. B equal 6, 7, 8. And A is a subset of B. No, that's subset. So subset, we'll do a collection of symbols. We'll start one of those, okay? So let's do some symbol collecting here. Okay. 
It's sort of like a less than or equal to, but it means subset. Okay, it's curvy instead of angled. Okay, now. Let S equal 8 and T equal 8. Then S is a subset of T and T is a subset of S. How do we feel about that one? 1 to 5. Right? If two sets are identical, they're subsets of each other, right? Because every element from S is also in T. Okay. No, well, unions are a little different. I'll get to unions. Okay, so for any set, um, S, S is a subset of S. So S is always a subset of itself. Uh, what happened to my purple? There it is. So A equals B if and only if A is a subset of B and uh, I should actually write the if and only if there. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Why do I care? That word working written in back back is lemma. L E M M A. It just means a minor little fact. Okay. Factoid lemma. Okay, that's interesting. Let's look at a special set. Let's look at our first special set. Let's look at our axiom. We're gonna have an axiom here. Are you ready? This is where we have our first axiom. Oh no, geometry flashback. Oh, axioms. Now yeah, these are easy. There exists a set with nothing in it. Okay? This is the empty set. This is just a set with nothing in it. How do we feel about that one to five? And I've got special notation for it. I have a set with nothing in it. I have an empty box. An empty box. Okay. All right. 
Let's do a definition here. The cardinality of a set, let A be a set. Okay. Those are absolute value symbols, but now we're overloading the absolute value operator, okay? The absolute value operator or whatever. So these absolute value symbols mean something different than we're used to them to being. This denotes the cardinality of the set. Okay, so this is the cardinality and it's non-recursive. Okay. All right. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by non-recursive? So let's let A... Let's let A equal the set AB and B equal the set uh, 2. Okay? This is not the definition of the union. We are not at unions yet. Those are set operations. We'll get to set operations. Okay? All right, so this is A here, there. So the cardinality of A equals 2. The cardinality of B equals 1. There's two objects in A, and there's one object in B. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? All I'm doing is I'm counting the stuff that's in them. Okay, now, here's what I mean by non-recursive. Let's say I've got a set containing A and B. Like so. So this is the set of A and B. The cardinality of this set is 2. Okay? I've got two items in it. I've got the set A and the set B. The cardinality of the set A, the set B, and the empty set. So this is a set containing A and B and the empty set. And its cardinality is 3. Okay? Cardinality simply counts the elements of A, but it counts them non-recursively. Or not just A, so whatever the set is. Let's say S equals the set, the empty set, a set containing the empty set, and a set containing and the number 5. The cardinality of S would equal 3. I've got a set, a set containing the empty set, and another item. The cardinality of the empty set equals zero. There's nothing in it.
Right. So the, the the person in chat has definitely said what it is. The cardinality of a set doesn't treat the objects inside of it as objects. Inside it as objects, but instead as objects, the whole set is itself an object. In other words, the set this set here contains the set A, the set B, the set, the empty set. Okay. Non-recursive means I don't count the stuff in A. I simply count A as a thing. Okay. Let's do another one. I've got T and T equals the set containing A. The set containing B, T has A in it, has B in it, and it has the number 6 in it, and it has the number 0 in it. Okay? The cardinality of T equals 4. Even though A has two things in it, I don't count those. They're inside A. I only count the outermost layer. No, it's not the cardinality of multiple sets. This is a set. Okay? That is a set. It's a bag containing the set A, the set B, and an empty bag. This cardinality here is the set... A, the T contains the set A, the set B, the number 6, and the number 0. So T has four elements in it. The set A, the set B, the 6, and the number 0. Even though A has two elements, I don't care. I count non-recursively. Okay, I don't dig in. I just count what's there. All right. So I can think about this. Oops. No, I don't want to update my ZSH. Okay. So this right here is my Ubuntu home. Let's see. There it goes. Okay, here's my Ubuntu. Now, if I type ls, it's going to give me a list of all of the things in my home directory. I've got a link here to downloads, um, a MySQL inut script, a, seg a, 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 a directory here, a directory here, a directory here, and I've got this set iter. Let's go to set containing. So I've got a set containing this empty set. Um, let's make a couple more dirt and let's touch um, uh, something. Now, my set here contains three elements. Okay. Let's touch one, touch two, touch. This set here contains three elements. This directory A contains three elements. Now, this set contains three elements. Even though A has three elements in it, okay, I only count the three elements out here. That's non-recursive. Now, let's compare that to this. This is counting recursively. If I put the dash R there, I'm counting recursively, right? I'd count one, two, three, four, five, six. But I'm not counting recursively, okay? I don't have the dash R. This is non-recursive counting. Okay. How do we feel about that one to five?
Okay. Definition. The set of all subsets of a set is called the power set. So let's do here. Let me do this. Let S be a set. The set of all subsets of S is called, there we go, the power set of S and is denoted 2 to the S. Okay? Now, example. Let A equal AB. Then 2 to the S is going to equal. Now, I want to list all of the subsets. Okay? What are all of the subsets of this? Well, what are, oh, sorry, this is to be A, not S, A. What is the list of subsets of this? Well, is the empty set a subset of this? Is it the fact that every element of an empty bag is in A? Yes. Is the singleton A a subset of this set? How about the singleton B? Yes. And then, of course, A itself is a subset. Right? The empty set is a subset of A. A is a subset of big A. B is a subset of B, of A. And then AB, which equals A, is a subset of A. So the cardinality of 2 to the a equals 4, because there are four elements in here. Let b equal a, b, c. 2 to the b would equal the empty set the singletons, the pairs, and the whole set. So 2 to the b equals 8. The size of 2 to the b equals 8. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? Yes, everything's a subset of itself. Um, everyone, I, I spent a little bit too much time. I'm going to end up going over today. I apologize. If you have to leave, I understand. Uh, but I've only got six minutes left, and I've got 15, oh, I got 10 minutes worth of material left to do. Okay.
I'm almost done, but I do have a little bit over. Okay. So that's the power set of a of a thing. Um, uh, let's see, because there's something I could cut. Oh, okay, not really. So what does this have to do with bits? Okay. All right. So let C equal A, B, C. Now, if A is a subset, yes, B, but I got B. A, B, C is B, right? B equals A, B, C. I did include B. If A is a subset of C, what is true? I've got a new symbol here, element of. So we've got, we're adding a new symbol. Okay. Yes, so I can write it as B or as ABC. You are correct. So, every subset of A, right, how many different possibilities do I have? Well, either A is an A or not, B is an A or not, and C is an A or not. I think it's the blue shirt. I think that's causing the confusion for the thing. One to five, how do we feel about that? If A is a subset of C, then either little a is in it or not. Little b is in it or not. And C is in it or not. So if I want to list all the subsets, Right? I include A or not.
So, okay. Let's do include, include, include. So things are either in there or they're not. So I could represent each of these sets, each of the subsets of A could be represented with three bits. Zero, zero, zero gives me the empty set. One, one, zero would yield A, B. One, one, one would yield A, B, C, and so on. Yes, the empty set is always a, a subset. How do we feel about that now, one to five? I either include the set or I don't. So there's a deep connection between bits and subsets. Okay. And that's a lot about what this class is about, okay? There's a lot, there's this deep connection between bits and subsets. And this class is about these connections. There's a connection between certain types of problems. And we really want to get into that connection because that helps us understand and connect the computer, solving problems on computers from, you know, the problems that we see. What is the relationship between math and computers and computers is math? And what you're going to find is that code is math and math is code. Okay, there's this deep connection between the two. So if you understand one, you can use it to understand the other. All right, there's one more thing I have to do. This is why I'm going over, and this is construct the numbers. Okay. So how do we construct sets? I have said the following. Okay. Axiom one was the following. The empty set exists. Axiom two, for any set S that exists, there exists a set containing only S. In other words, S exists implies the set containing S also exists. Okay? Axiom 3. For any two sets that exists. The finite there exists a set
containing the elements from both sets. This is called the union. This is saying that finite unions exist. Okay? So, let's talk about this union. Let A and B be sets. A union B is the set containing all of the elements of A and the elements of B duplicates discarded. Okay. Example. A equal A, B, C. B equals A, D. A union B would equal A, B, C, D. I've got two A's here, but they're discarded. This is called a Venn diagram. I've got A. I've got B. Together, they make a union B. One to five, how do we feel like that? About that? Okay. So using these three axioms, I'm gonna construct the natural numbers. Okay? This is the von Neumann construction of the natural numbers. All right. This symbol right here, this is the number zero. This symbol means is defined as the empty set. Okay. One to five, how do we feel about that? That means define by definition. I'm defining let, let zero be the empty set defined as. Okay, so zero is an empty bag. I should have a bag. Do I have a bag? What's in this? Um, that has a dive computer in it. Let's leave that in there. Um, I don't have an empty bag. An empty bag is zero. One... I'm going to define as the set containing the empty set. One to five, how do we feel about that? So I've taken an empty box and I've stuck it inside another box. Here's an empty box. Here's an empty box. I took a box and I threw it in an empty box. There's the number one. This on its own would be the number zero. This on its own would be the number zero. 
They're both empty boxes. I take an empty box, I shove it in an empty box. So this is a box containing an empty box. And that's the number one. One is, it's not the bag holding the empty bag, it's the bag containing the empty bag. So it's not just the empty, it's not just the bag containing the empty bag, it's also the empty bag inside it, if that makes sense. But yes. Okay. Notice here that one equals the set containing zero. I'm going to define two as a set containing an empty bag and the bag containing the empty bag. So I took an empty box. I took my box containing my empty box and I put them together in another box. Do I have another box? No. And now I've got cards all over the place. One to five, how do we feel about that? But that means this is equal to, this was the empty set, and this is the number one. Three is going to equal the empty set, the bag containing an empty bag, and the bag containing the empty bag, and the bag containing the empty bag. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Which equals the set containing zero, one, and two. The dot dot equals means is defined as. Four is going to, I'm not going to do that. Zero, one, two, and three. So I take for every natural number, I take all of the numbers before them. So N would equal the set containing zero, one, two, dot, dot, dot. n minus 1. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? Exactly. It builds on itself as you go up. Another way of saying this, if you don't want to use minus, is to say that n plus 1 equals the set equals n union a set containing n. Okay. So three is the set zero, one, two, three. I'm sorry, four is the set zero, one, two, three.
Okay. Another way to say it is to say N plus plus is defined as N union, the set containing N. Okay, and we're going to see this again. N plus plus means the successor of N or N plus one. One to five, how do we feel about this idea? If you give me a natural number, I can construct it going up. In other words, from these three axioms, from these three axioms, I can build all the natural numbers. And that's what, that's the end. That's what God, that's the only things that God gives us half the bat, right? We get the natural numbers. We get, we get every natural number. We don't get the set of natural numbers. Axiom four. Okay, and that's what we'll pick it up next time, all right? So what did we cover today? We covered um, we covered bits and how many messages we can input code in bits. We covered how I count bits. We covered what sets are for us and the cardinality of a set. We covered what a subset was and the symbols for subsets. And we covered how many subsets does a set have? And what does this have to do with bits? And then we covered how to build them. And we also covered unions. Okay. Next time we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about more about set functions. And we're going to start um, talking about how to count subsets. Uh, not just the set of all subsets, but then how to count subsets of a certain size. Um, are there any questions? Okay. The quiz for the next class is posted, but the um, the quiz for the uh, the actual quiz that you take on Proctorio is not yet posted. It should be posted in a few hours, uh, sometime after dinner. Um, also, the um, uh, the problem set. Remember that there's problem set help session on Fridays. Uh, we don't have a, a lecture. We just have the problem set help section. There's only two lectures a week, but that's on Discord. If you're having difficulty with the problem set, um, by all means, come then. Um, are there any other questions? Okay. Thank Laura, everybody, for uh, doing chat, um, and we'll talk next time.